All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another virtual potluck leadership and coaching session. I'm your host, Kenner Brewer. Uh, good Friday to everybody. I hope you find yourself all safe and well as we endure this global pandemic. Um, oftentimes, when you get to Friday, you're a little fatigued and you're running out of gas, right? Your, your, your tank's a little empty. And uh, our guest is going to recharge you. Uh, because she is a force to be reckoned with. I've met her once, and as you know, many, many of you know, I navigated pro football, I played some pro football. I was a bit of an athlete back in the day. And so what happens instinctually, when you walk into a room and you see another athlete, you can pick them out pretty quick. And the very first time I met our guest, uh, it was obvious that this woman is on a mission on so many different levels, and, and she's accomplished so much. A two-time Ironman an adventurer where she's done some climbing and now she's also a savvy entrepreneur. She runs a business called Elevate Spin here in Barhaven in the nation's capital, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And uh, I'm just, I've been fired up about just about picking her brain and picking her heart because she has a great story. So please welcome Jessica Taranik. Jess, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am good. I'm going to take off the glasses now. I want to get to it. I, I, I don't want to delay. Let's first talk about you and, and, um, your drive. Where does that come from? Uh, there's so much to it. It's, um, yeah. I don't understand half the time where I get it from, but I, I know that it's something that I love to do and I love to lead. And I've been very lucky with where I've been. Um, and it's who I surround myself with. It's, it's a long story, basically, from when I started. So I don't know what you want to get into. So you well, kind of let's go back. Let's go back in time, all the way to let us to go back as far as Kelowna. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Let's do that. Let's go so, to Kelowna. Um, okay. So where do I begin? So about yeah, actually, June's going to be about eleven years. So eleven years mm -hmm. ago, I lost my twin sister to cancer. Yeah. Um, she is a amazing human being. She uh, had a daughter. So I'm very lucky that I have a niece. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it was a really devastating story because she's, you know, my twin, right? You know, mm -hmm. you have your siblings and I very much, I, I miss that connection that I have with growing up with my right. sister. And, you know, 11 years ago when I lost her, it was, it was devastating, but she's the one that changed me because she forced me to keep living for her. And I think that's where my whole life changed really 11 years ago. I didn't know direct, I didn't know the direction I was going. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life and, and losing somebody. And, you know, if anyone's lost anybody in their life, you know what it's like a grief just takes over, but mm -hmm. I went one way with it and I decided that I will live for her and I try my best to live every day to my fullest because there are no guarantees so that's where my whole story began 11 years ago but yeah. you yeah. you you were an athlete growing up though correct yeah so yeah right so when i was younger mm -hmm. when i'd say high school or elementary school high school no not even high school elementary school i was in track i was a full track star like i track star oh my gosh in elementary school right. oh my, you know you're a star. um i loved it i i won i was such a, i would loved it it was 200 meter races relays mm -hmm. all you know the triple jump all that stuff it was my favorite thing in the world and i thought i right. was going to go somewhere with it i played basketball for a little bit i loved it it was so much fun um, but then I got diagnosed with scoliosis. So scoliosis okay. is a curve of your spine. Um, and unfortunately it was so far gone that I had to get a back brace and get, and then back surgery. Right. So my, right now I have two metal rods down my spine and that completely stopped all activity. So from age 12 to probably when my sister got sick, I didn't mm -hmm. do any sport, I didn't do anything because I didn't know how to handle my back pain, what I did with it. Right. Um, and it was a very trial, difficult time for me because especially during high school, right? Because that's when you want to do sports and connect with people and mm -hmm. team sports and all that stuff, but I couldn't do it. And again, back up to my sister, I found this ride to conquer cancer from BC, in BC. That's where I'm right. from in Kelowna. And um, I chose to ride a bike and bike for 260 kilometers and I never even knew how to do it. I just figured it out as I went and mm -hmm. I, that's when it changed me. Mm -hmm. Now explain the bike you rode because I find really <laughs> a funny part of the story. So 
With with the ride to conquer cancer, it took me three. I signed up, and and in three months, I had to learn how to bike. Well, get a bike, learn how to okay. bike, and then also raise money for the ride. So you have to raise twenty five hundred dollars in order to ride in the ride to conquer cancer. So I had this like hybrid bike. I had a picnic basket on the front. I didn't even know what the he- <laughs> heck I was doing. I had lemon pants on with flares on with flowers. I didn't even know what what I was doing. And for two days, this bike ride happens and it was pouring rain. Think about the West Coast, just raining. So we rode from Vancouver, BC to Seattle, Washington. And um, it was a nightmare. It was like so crazy, but it was so much fun because when you cross that finish line, uh, everything changed, you know, you just, you knew you could do anything that you put your mind to. Did you shift? I'm going to ask Chris to bring up the picture of you and Michelle, if, if you can, Chris, while we're discussing this. Um, you have scoliosis, you have surgery, you lose a lot of who you are. So you're a warrior, you're battling and doing your thing, but you're really not purpose driven. It's not an authentic battle. You're just sort of doing your thing. And then Michelle gets sick and, and you eventually lose her. Is that where your purpose Obviously, there's a shift, and, and and was it in a moment, or was it sort of just something that overwhelmed you, or you had to go do something because you had to live for your sister? Yeah. So, uh, with surgery, I had no choice. I was pretty, I was yeah. very angry because you know, especially being a child and or mm-hmm. child or a young adult, figuring out your way through high school and your purpose and what you want to do. You know, you don't really know. And sports and mm-hmm. track and field was my purpose, and it got taken away from me. So I had to shift. And when my sister got sick, everything changed. Like my own twin sister, who's literally half of me, had sick with with stage four malignant melanoma, brain tumors. She died with like eight tumors in her body. It was absolutely awful. And um, I'll just like, I'll cry. Like it's, it's, it changed me so much because you see someone so that they they cannot do anything. And I, I don't know if anyone's ever experience loss like that but you see them just wilting away and you yeah. can't you, you cannot help them right and and it's it's it would it for me to sit there and and feel sorry for myself I felt selfish right I'm like yeah, okay, sure. well, you know my sister can't do it so I want to I'm going to keep going and and that's when I think I rediscovered what I wanted and you know it's it's about helping people and making sure that they know that they can do anything that they put their mind to it's you know, a lot of people have limitations to what they think they can do because sure. they compare themselves to others or they're not, they don't think they're good enough, right. whatever, whatever. And I think you, that's why I think it's such a big thing is your mind and your mind is so powerful. And I think that's why I connect with you, Ken, because you, yeah. you're a true believer of that and pushing through it and, and just, you keep going one foot in front of the other, no matter what, you know, and I think that's, what's important. Now, I will admit now that the reason, part of the reason why I wanted to get you on board and discuss your, comp- your, your competitive side, your athleticism and all the things you've achieved. But I really want you to celebrate Michelle. And it's funny because I think of you doing that bike ride and all the emotions you probably went through in the rain and your flares and, and the bike and everything, but you had to do it. And you probably cried. You probably laughed. You probably had your, felt your heart breaking again, all the stuff you went through, but then you got to the finish line and part of it was, I'm going to be okay. And right now, Michelle's probably looking down at me, laughing her ass off at me. Mm-hmm. And, and so that kind of experience, and the reason why that it, I wanted to get to that was because when I was five, uh, so when I was four, I had a sister who was five, and she was riding a bike that was a little too big for her, and she had, uh, she had fallen, and she, she bumped her head on a parked car, and mm-hmm. uh, we thought she just bumped her head, and she was crying, and she wasn't feeling well, and uh, I remember them taking, mom and dad taking her to the hospital, and we never saw her again. Mm-hmm. Uh, she had some internal bleeding. And she had passed away and I was four. So in terms of recognition and what was going on in my memory, I'm not as connected, but at the same time, the funny thing was is that every time I lined up to play football and I'm not necessarily a spiritual guy, but I'd always take a moment to pray and ask my sister, Jojo, Joanne, Jojo to look over me. Yeah. And, and, and it's just, again, you can't bring her back but she's still such a powerful force in my life and the members of my family's life. So when things went south or when things were challenging, uh, I could rely on her. And the reason why I bring that up is because when I went my first marathon in Hawaii, I was training here in Ottawa and it was a little cool. I had a minor calf strain, but as you know, you get in the heat 
right? And you become real pliable. Yeah. And with about 15K left, my calf went. Mm. And they say, okay, whatever you do, don't stop. Keep walking. Keep moving. Because as you know, you'll stiffen up real quick. And before you know, you feel like a two by four. So I started walking and I went through the emotional gamut. I cried. I prayed. Uh, I felt lost. I was going to quit. All these things going on. It was the toughest experience I ever had athletically, but the toughest experience I ever had emotionally. Mm -hmm. To, so, so the question was, do you want to get to the finish line? Do you want to get through this storm? Yeah. Find a way. Yeah, always. And that's what I think true, great, like the best leaders, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you can relate to this, It, no matter what you do or what happens to us, just like we're in a crisis right now, we yeah. always find a way to get through it. And that's, I think that's so important. And I think that's where I'm in reality lies. And I don't know if that stems from you losing your sister, which... I'm sorry to hear about mm -hmm. and me losing mine or anybody else who has something that pushes them. We yeah. always find a way because we know that there's something in the back of my head that knows like, okay, it isn't guaranteed. And I know this is going to pass. I've been through worst. I've yes. been through worst. What's the worst mm -hmm. that can happen? Let's just keep going. And I think that's, yeah. what's super important. And I, I don't, I hope more people can live like that because it's so true. Like why waste another minute doing something you don't like doing or, you know, yeah follow your dreams, not because you don't think you can, but do it because you feel like you really can get through it, you know, and there's so much to it. I had a discussion with Ray Zahab. I'm not sure if you know who Ray is. He's an adventurer. He's run across uh, the Sahara. Uh, he's done all kinds of really cool things. And I really think you should meet him because I think the two of you will have a serendipitous connection immediately. Uh, but I, I asked him, I, I said, do we wake up in the morning and consciously or subconsciously, do we ask ourselves this question? I believe we do, but I want to know if he did the same thing, where you ask yourself, am I in the right time in the right place? Because mm -hmm. if you are, then if you're in your right time, right place, then get it up and going, regardless of what the day is going to offer you, good, bad, or different. You're going to be okay. You're going to figure out a way to do it because we're naturally designed to adapt and overcome. Yeah. But if you don't feel like you're in your right place and you stay there like Groundhog Day, it's like trying to fly with a piano on your back. You're just not, you're not going to be, you're not going to get off the ground. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think, again, we, we persevere through the hard things, right? So you have yeah. to, you have to ask yourself those questions every day. I wake up, like I wake up to think about like, okay, what does today bring? Like, mm -hmm. what can I do differently? What am I grateful for? What are things that, you know, I can bring to my team. I'm always thinking about things, mm -hmm. right. And when I catch myself in a bad moment, I, I question myself. I'm like, why am I like this? What's happening? What's yeah. actually taking place? You know, so it's, it's an important thing to have. And I think we always have to talk to ourselves so we can move forward. Right. So, yeah. So when you're teaching a spin class, it's not a, just a spin class. No. You're, you're giving something almost unique that you can't put it. You can't, it's not tangible, but you're giving them something. And, and, and maybe what you're giving them is teaching them that whole idea of get in the moment and go yeah. before the moment's gone. And that's exactly it. Our, you know, people think spin, it's just spin. Like 100%, mm -hmm. I understand, I get it. But yeah. our spin classes are designed to help create an experience. It's helped to create a mind battle on overcoming mm -hmm. things and, and getting stronger, not just on the bike, but also, you know, in your everyday life. And we're teaching right now, if you can hear it, I hope you can. But if you I can, can, yeah, it's good, off, yeah. No, no, please go it's 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 my, in the bathroom, but we're teaching, we're filming right now. And it, we've been constantly filming during this pandemic because yeah. we need people at home need a little bit of joy, a little bit of routine mm -hmm. and a little bit of something to keep them going. Right. And yeah. it's, it's an experience. It's, it's so much more than a spin at that. you like riding a bike. It's just like when I do my races or climbs or anything, I'm always, again, thinking about what I can do better and mm. that's, that's how my that's how my mindset works every morning I'm like what can I do better what can I change how can I lead better that's how I'm always going that's where my, my yeah. mind is crazy it just doesn't stop <laughs> it's just on fire all the time now, but do you have to be mindful though to make sure that you recognize your audience and that it isn't about Jessica and so because I remember Wayne Gretzky left hawking got coaching in the NHL and he struggled as a coach and part of it was because what came naturally to him that he expected from his team, they couldn't do. Yep. 
Yeah. So I train instructors okay. and it's the same, not the same thing. Obviously I'm not Wayne Gretzky, but it's, um, it's, it's everyone trains and learns differently. Right. Yeah. So you have to, you have to be able to tap into everybody's emotions. And mm -hmm. my team is full of all different personalities. So you have to be able to lead to each one individually in a different way, but still bring them together. And that's definitely been over my career of managing and leading has been very challenging because you bring a group of people together, but everyone is different. And so you, you, how do you keep them going? How do you keep them, mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you train them to be, to ride together or do the experience that I want? You have to yeah. learn how they work first and then you can teach them. That's how I've learned. That's funny thing is when I do spin classes, I always make sure now your setup is so that you're facing your entire audience. But oftentimes what happens, it's a bit of an oval setting. And what I always do is I try to get to the bike where I can see I get a side version, a look at my instructor. Because I need to know if they're doing the full case. If they're saying, okay, add some to but and you see it, but they don't actually turn the dial. <laughs> and and I, I'm always like, don't ask me to do something if you're not going to do it. 100%. I get that. We all, we, I make sure that our, our instructors have to ride. They yeah. have to be able to, if they can't teach a hard song and they can't do it themselves and they can't teach it. So yeah. it's, it's very much our, <laughs> it's a very intense training. It's definitely a lot of practice and a lot of, you got, just like you said, like you better be turning that dial up and working just as hard. So for those who are joined us, I, I'm with uh, the owner of Elevate Spin in Barhaven, Ontario, Canada. That is Jessica Tranek. And uh, if you hear music in the background, it's because she's at the club. And she's in the <laughs> bathroom right now doing an interview. <laughs> um, I'm at the, the bathroom. It's too loud out there. <laughs> your girls are outside. Come on, Jess. Let's go. I want to dance. Um, oh let's get into uh, Iron Man. Okay. And Chris, you have photos of the Iron Man and also some climbing stuff. So let's get into your background there. First off, why the Ironman? And maybe more importantly, the Ironman is a solitary competition, like running a marathon. Mm -hmm. Does that appeal to you more than, say, maybe the team sport? 100%. Yeah. I, I don't know. I Again, like I grew up doing track and field, and I grew up mm. when I could. It was It's something, of, again, it's – I never really played team sports except for a little bit of basketball. So, yeah. I, again, I love the whole team aspect, just like we created a team here at Elevate Spin. Mm -hmm. But I, for me personally, doing races is, again, it's a mental thing. And I yeah. talk to myself the whole time and I'm constantly thinking about ways to be better in my race. Like when I did Lake Placid into September 2019, I, you know, from the swim to the transition to the bike ride, just like if anybody knows what I'm talking about, you're yeah. always thinking about what's coming next and you're thinking about how you can push and what you can do better. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's in those moments that you have, right? Like you, it's a race. So you, yeah. you can't really waste it. You have to go for it. And it's, you've been tr training for this whole thing. So that's when I'm like, you know what? I've been training for this. I'm going to go for it and yeah. just see what happens, you know? So it's, it's pretty cool what you can do when you put your mind to, to something. The, the funny thing with Ironman or long distance events is that, and I found this when I was did Honolulu, is you can tell everybody you're training and you can tell, yeah, I'm going to do an Ironman. Like, oh my God, you're going to be, you're, you're crazy, all that stuff, right? And uh, if you don't do the training, when yeah. you get to the start and there's that moment and you've been there, and there's that moment yeah. where the truth taps you on the shoulder. It says, it gives you one or two message. One, go forth, you're fine. Or two, good luck because you, yeah. you know you lied to yourself i know so you have to train right like i did i did um last year i did the ottawa race weekend yeah the half marathon and see kind of what happened to you my calf went about okay. two kilometers left i was cramped it was hot i didn't train in the heat yet like i wasn't quite ready for it ottawa's weather is all over the place like right. it was cold up until a few days before and um i i completely was I was so disappointed in myself but I knew it after it was my fault I didn't train yeah. properly. I just yeah. and I knew it so it was something that I knew I could have done better afterwards but mm -hmm. you have to train for these things otherwise because your body can handle it but you have to train yourself to do it plus your mind needs to to learn different ways of how how to go about the different parts of it right so yeah yeah and my biggest problem with training was the Sunday long runs where you have to do the 10 and ones yeah right and and uh I'm a toe runner. I was a toe runner. I had to change my entire gait. Wow. And I was okay when I was running by myself. But I got along the canal, though, and the people running back and forth, right? All these people going, running and training, doing their stuff. 
and my pace and my stride kept changing depending on if it was a girl or a guy. I was, I was, everything was external. And I had to get to a point where I'd run 10K and not remember the 10K I ran. Right. Where you turn the brain off. Yeah. Did you have yeah. to get to that spot? Because you were quick twitch in track and field and then to go to long distance. To that, there's an adjustment. Brain. Yeah, like it's it's actually crazy. You can, yeah. I can run 5K and really push it. And then all of a sudden I'll do a 10K and I'm like, oh my God, like this is so long. But then, and then you have to train your, re, retrain what you're doing, right? And then mm. 10K seems easy because... 5k is nothing because you just did 5k so it's yeah. all about perception right it and so when i do long distance or i do say the, the iron man you you switch up the thoughts you're like okay i'm just going to break it up i'm going to focus on the swim and then get it over with. and then then you can focus on the next portion i don't yeah i'm not one to to look too far ahead because then that's just overwhelming right so yeah. i like to break it up just like in a spin class i try to tell the mm -hmm. the riders that you just break it up you know, every song just treat every song yes like every yes song, instead of the whole 50 minutes because that could seem overwhelming right so it's it's breaking it up and that's how i try to do things just like my climbs you know yeah. every day is a little bit different than the climb and you can break it up in different ways because every day is a different feeling right so that's how mm -hmm. i try to tell myself I love that because when you when you think of sports teams, say the NHL, for example, they got 82 games. They don't work at look at it and say, okay, we got to win 60 of 82 games because that's you're asking them a lot. Yeah, that's so a see, lot. Let, let's break it into five game chapters, segments, and let's win. Let's pick up out of the 10 points we can pick up. Let's pick up six. Yeah. Let's pick up six. If we do that, we're going to be okay. So uh, those incremental goals and in to portion them allows you to then if you have a bad chapter. So you have a bad segment in the spin class. Um, you have another chapter to regain. It's not a baby in the bath versus the and the bathwater sort of yeah. approach to your experience. Yeah, exactly. And it's like a race or a climb or in in spin. You can't just turn it off and restart. So yeah. you have to be able to adapt to what's happening. So, mm -hmm. um, for example, Lake Placid this last race in yeah. September, it was freezing cold in the morning. I'm like, what? Like I have to be standing outside for how long before yeah. I swim yeah. and it's completely cold. And those are things that you have to adapt to. And, and you train, it, it's, if you can just get your mind to be strong, everything else follows. And, and you had to tell yourself that, and I was fine. I went swimming and everything was good. It yeah. just, it's all about again, perception and how you, how you think about it and how we talked about earlier with our, you know, my sister or your sister looking mm. over us, I always ask my sister for guidance every day. I'm like, what can I do today? Can you help me here or whatever? Yeah. And start of my race at Lake Placid, we have a song. So the very first ride to conquer, um, mm. ride to conquer cancer bike ride that I did, Viva La Vida by Coldplay started playing. Okay. And I was starting, the, starting the, um, the start line and I was just overwhelmed, like crying. I'm like, oh, a kilometer in. I'm like, well, how much more do I have to go? <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and then when the finish line happened, the same song was playing and it was just too overwhelming over two days. And then the start line at Lake Placid, Viva La Vida, Coldplay's going. I'm just about to go in the water. I feel like I was being filmed in a movie. Like, I'm yeah. like, is this happening right now <laughs> I, knew, I knew in that moment my sister was gonna watch me and she she watched yeah. me that whole race and she made me like I kept going because I'm like you know what you you don't have this opportunity to do this so I'm gonna go no matter what and those mm -hmm. are the things that keep you going so that's how I live and so you get going you have the boost of energy but then you got actually you got to do the race yeah but then you're like uh-oh <laughs> right. so because you, you can't be sprinting the whole time no. right and throw everything you've done in preparation at the window so then you get there and then you have that last kilometer and i'm, I'm and you've been there with the iron man where you can hear the finish line mm -hmm. before you see it mm -hmm. so you're oh, hearing what? people hey bob jackson you're an iron man no, the worst was Lake Placid. If anyone's done Lake Placid, you run in already. I'm okay. like, I think you have 5K left. You get really close to the finish line and you right. hear it all. And then you have another five kilometers to run. Oh, it teases you. Oh, I was so angry. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? And so then you, I run back and then you have like a 200 meter sprint into the finish line. It's just so overwhelming. And you're like. <laughs> and now what, what, what's always entertaining too is people barely get through their event. But the last 200 meters, they turn into Usain Bolt and they fly. It's just so, 
<laughs> because I feel like the finish lines are always so emotional, you know, no they matter are. who you are, you, you feel pro, right? Like yeah. you feel like you make a difference. It's so it's, fun. It's so true. I, I absolutely love racing. It's I like, love it. So I did the marathon. They called out my name and what was important is they, pr they pronounced it properly. And you've probably been there. Where they get the cross, hey, it's Hironich or some whatever, right? Because oh when, when I played for the Auto Rough Riders, my first start in the introduce the offense, and they say, okay, here are the Auto Rough Riders, et cetera, number 54, Herb Damon, quarterback number nine, Damon Allen, at slot back number 17, Ken Ev, 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 and number 87, Gerald Wilcox. Like, really? No respect. I really appreciate that. Thanks for taking the time to learn <laughs> Um, I don't, I, I, I want to talk to you all day, but at the same time, I know you're, you're busy, but I want to get to uh, the climbs mm -hmm. and different, little different nuance in terms of the experience of doing the Ironman, because it, see, with, with Ironman, you can bonk and someone puts you in a van and you can go. Mm -hmm. When you start climbing. Yeah, you really go up a mountain. You could fall down a mountain. Well, so I started, my first climb was in 2007. I did Kilimanjaro, Mount Kilimanjaro. Yeah. That was my very first experience actually really doing anything endurance, um, like not endurance, but, but yeah, endurance yeah. rides are putting your body through a completely different crazy experience. Mm -hmm. And I completely didn't understand it. I didn't understand nutrition. I didn't understand sleeping. I didn't understand any of it and right. so i learned really hard from it It was a really great experience mm -hmm. but i was a rookie like full rookie yeah. and so then i fast forward i did machu picchu which was amazing and i love to see the world and right. anytime i'm going to go traveling i'm most likely going to tie it in with a race or a climb it's just something i'm always going to do mm -hmm. um and then i did the west coast trail which is about a 70 80 kilometer hike on the west coast on mm -hmm. island and you camp you bring everything in it's again the west coast so you never know when right. it's going to start raining right, right and sure. it was two days pouring rain, and you sleep on the beach so you're in the That's sand again you have to do everything on your own right yeah. and it was a, that one was so hard because you're by yourself and i went with somebody but yeah. we we just figured it out as we went right i'm like okay and i love it i love that experience you wake up you hear the you hear the ocean it's just unbelievable and then fast forward i did um I did base camp of Everest a few mm. years ago and I went and hired a guide, but I flew into Nepal all by myself, you know, met up with these guides that I hired, no idea who they are and right. they speak English. And so they took me around Kathmandu and then I went on this really tiny airplane into Lukla, which is one of the most dangerous airports in the world. Right. I'm like, what am I doing? And um, you're in it. You just have to again you you adapt and you figure it out it's a new culture new food um you don't you're on somebody else's schedule you're yeah. kind of just like rolling with it and you have to figure out altitude and and um hiking all day right yeah. and it's it's cold again it was freezing when i went so it's a lot again it's not just the hiking physical aspect because people are like oh you're fake you'll be fine. I'm like, yeah, okay, no. there's more to it. Like yeah. you, you, you are not in the comfort of your own home. You're not in the comfort of, of warmth. It's completely mm. freezing. Like they don't really have heat anywhere at all. Yeah. And, um, you just have to, you're just in it. Like, and that's again, the coolest mentality because you adapt to this new thing and mm. 12 days, no shower. You're just figuring it out again as you go. And I, I, I live for that stuff and and getting to the to base camp was such an exhilarating feeling because mm -hmm. so many people have done it and you now you can be part of that and you can yeah. you can take that home with you and um, I was very lucky I had a very beautiful climb and mm -hmm. you know I got stuck in Lukla on the way home for three days and that was harder than the climb because you couldn't do anything for three days and right those things kind of get to you because you just want to go and shower, but at the same time, it is what it is. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's all a mental, mental challenge. Life is every day is a mental, mental game. And I think you just need to continue on and adapt. The funny thing is, is and I had this conversation with Elia Sakely. I'm not sure if you know who Elia is, but Elia is a finding life guy, climbing all kinds of stuff. And, and to top it off, the guy's gorgeous. Yeah. Right. So really Elia, uh, but, um, we got into a discussion and it always stuck with me that as complicated as the idea of climbing Everest or Kilimanjaro seems, it actually is an effort to 
simplify things mm-hmm. and reattach ourselves with our own innate ability. And we're all capable of it, of adapting, mm-hmm. of taking into a moment and say, okay, what do I need to do yeah. to get, not just get through this, but to, to excel. Yeah. And, and, and I think we get so comfortable in some of the creature comforts we have that we forget that we are by nature warriors. Yeah, that's exactly it. Just like now, yeah. we've all had to adapt. It's been an unprecedented time of things like that we never thought would happen. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I didn't think I'd be open three months and have to shut down my business because of, yeah. because of COVID, right? So it's you have to adapt to it and you take it every day and you learn from it. And I'm, you know, you're, we're figuring things out as we go and we're taking our classes online. You're doing this online mm-hmm. and it's, it's pretty cool what you can do with things once you yeah. kind of like for the first three days I was feeling sorry for myself. I'm like, wow, sure. closed, right. You know, we go through the emotions and yeah. then I'm like, you know what, this isn't about me anymore. This is about everybody else. Let's see what we can do. And it's, it's, that's how you just get to keep going with that. You one foot in front of the other is what I always say. Yeah, one step at a time. Uh, I'm going to let you go soon, but before I do, I want to read something up from your Instagram. And this is a post, you buy your bike, by your spin bike. It says, be the kind of woman who shows up for her life, who understands she was made for more, who believes she is capable of doing amazing things, whose own dreams make her nervous and go ahead and do them anyway, who, who never asked permission to be herself. Be the kind of woman who shows up for herself. That is pretty powerful. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's, again, I believe yeah. that we all have dreams and doubts and trust me, I had people telling me that I couldn't open up a studio and mm-hmm. everyone's done it before. I'm like, I don't, I, I agree, but I know that I can do it. And it's, yeah. it, it's not about everybody else. It's about, it's about what I want and how yeah. I believe we can change the world. And I think, I think a lot of people have doubts and, you know, they can get into your brain and things happen or, don't work out for you, but I think everything's happening for everybody for a reason. And you just have to believe in yourself. Ultimately, you have to believe in what you can um, accomplish. Well, I am grateful for this time, Jessica. I really am. Thank you so much. Uh, how do people find you, track you down? I know you're on Instagram. Instagram but, uh, is way, um, at uh, Jess Tyrannic or Elevate Spins the other way, because that's all I do. <laughs> now, all your bikes have been rented out, I they believe. Have. It's okay. long wait list. It's been pretty crazy. Now I have a bike. It's in the. It's actually in the kitchen because <laughs> we got given a foosball table. So I got to reset everything here on the ship here on the Titanic. Uh, if someone has a spin bike and they want to connect with you and do a class, mm-hmm. how do they do that? Uh, you can either email us, uh, email us at info at or okay. you can just go onto our Instagram page, Elevate Spin, and and uh, direct message us, okay. and then we can contact you and give you the link and everything like that. Or it's on our website also. We we tried to make it so it's an easy platform yeah. and um, easily accessible. Once we get through this global grow, this global pandemic, what's next uh, besides getting your business back to 100 miles an hour? <laughs> what are you going to accomplish? What do you want to do? There's a few things, again, like I, I want to grow this company and I think virtually has been a pretty cool experience. So we're, we're going to see where it takes us. I have mm-hmm. a sense of dreams and, you know, I want to keep going on with my races. I don't think I, don't, I have a feeling I'm not racing this summer. So we'll just yeah. find another race. That's how it goes, right? It's everybody's in the same boat. So That's we'll it. see. Hey, Jess, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Ken. I really appreciate it. Stay safe and stay well. Yeah, you too. And keep punching those pedals. Thanks. <laughs> That's Jessica Tronic. She's the owner of Elevate Spin, Iron Man Adventure, and obviously an authentic warrior. Grateful to have that chat with her. And uh, next week, another warrior. On Monday, Leanne Lang, my old wingman, my wingman for my days in TV. We're going to chat and laugh, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Then we have Damon Allen on Wednesday. And then I'm thinking maybe Brad Shaw, a, a hockey coach and former Ottawa Senators captain, will be joining us as well. So, Check in with me on Facebook and all that stuff, and, and uh, you'll see the roster of all the great people that I've connected with. We're going to share their thoughts on coaching and leadership. Boy, this was a great way to finish up the week with Jessica. Um, everybody stay safe, stay well, and have yourself a great weekend. Take care.